What is vector art? Vector art is artwork that was made in a vector graphics program and to fully understand how it works uh, we need to take a look at the other type of artwork that can be displayed on a computer which is bitmap and bitmap images uh, can be digital paintings or photos or just about anything that you would see on the internet and a bitmap is a little grid of pixels which are these little squares and these little squares are the smallest point um, that you can make uh, to define an image. They're kind of like atoms. You could think of them as the smallest unit of measure. And the number of pixels in an image defines an image's resolution. So if there's a lot of pixels, then the image is high resolution and it can be printed really large and it looks really detailed. But you can see there's a limit. If you zoom in, eventually you're going to see the pixels and that's going to ruin the visual quality of the image. If you zoom out, then you don't really see them anymore, and it's not an issue. So bitmaps are made out of pixels. Vectors, however, are not made out of pixels. Vectors are made out of uh, anchor points, also known as uh, vertices. And if we take a look at how that works, we get these little blue nodes here. And you can move these nodes around, and when you do, they're always going to connect a line from one to another depending on whether or not you set a curve and whether or not you make the point or you make the corner pointy or smooth. You can do a lot of different things to reshape your artwork. So it's really fully editable and because it's not made out of pixels there's no resolution so you can make it as big as you want and you can zoom in as much as you want and it's always just going to connect one point to another point depending on how you ask it to, to draw graphics. Now you are kind of limited to some more simple graphics because of that. Uh, mostly vector art is uh, simple shapes and simple colors. It's not anything uh, that would compare to a digital painting that you would do in Photoshop or Corel Painter. But the technology is getting more advanced um, and you can produce some more painterly, realistic looking stuff. So vector art is really good for being able to edit and change the color really quickly. Um, bitmap, however, is a little bit more difficult. So if I'm doing logos and things that I know I'm going to want to be very versatile and be able to enlarge and reduce quite easily, then I'm going to choose vector. So vector for logos, bitmap for digital paintings and photos. That's kind of the way you want to go. Because if you try to turn a photo into a vector, uh, you can try to do that, but in the conversion process, it's not really going to look that great. Um, so each one of these has their own benefit. If we look at a bitmap painting in Corel Painter, I'll zoom into it really close here and we'll start to see these pixels. So there are some advantages and disadvantages. The advantage to working in bitmap is that you're dealing with pixels. so you can paint and you can do things in a way that's more natural and it's more like uh, real painting would be where you can smudge things around and you can blend you can't really do this um, in a vector program at this point in time there's blurs and, and different things but you're not dealing with pixels so you're not going to get the same effect so uh, when I'm digital painting I'm doing it in bitmap um, when I'm doing logos and other different simple graphics, I'll, I'll do it in vector. Uh, you can use Adobe Illustrator. If you want a free program, you can get Inkscape. That's another good uh, vector program. We'll take a look at some kind of advanced vector stuff. In Adobe Illustrator, there is a feature um, called gradient meshes, and these gradient meshes um, long story short just basically allow you to make vector art that looks more uh, like a digital painting would so believe it or not this is not a digital painting it looks like it is it looks like bitmap art but you can see if I zoom into it it is indeed a vector it has no resolution you can zoom into it forever now it doesn't look that hot from up close uh, but from far away it looks pretty good Look at another example. 
of a piece I did. This is a dagger. This is again all vector art. So you can get some pretty cool effects with it if you know how to use it. It does take a lot of practice and it is a lot different than painting. It's kind of very counterintuitive and you have to plan everything out ahead of time. Here's some cherries. So you can see you can get some pretty cool effects, but these examples here, these are kind of a personal challenge to myself to see if I could do this just to figure out the technique. But if I were going to try to produce the same Im image here, I would much rather do it in Corel Painter because it would take a lot less time. The only advantage to doing it in Vector is if I wanted it to be something that I could uh, scale up or down and have it always look really good and really sharp and really clean. Uh, so there really is no right or wrong as to which program you should use. It kind of just depends on uh, which one you're more comfortable working in. One thing to mention is that uh, if I make this vector image here, it's only vector within uh, Adobe Illustrator or another vector program. As soon as you export this image, you're going to have to export it as a JPEG or a PNG or any other type of file format. As soon as you export it, it becomes a bitmap. So it gets converted to a bitmap and it loses all of its vector properties. You can no longer go in and edit that particular file um, and have it maintain its resolution. So that's one thing to watch out for. Vector is only vector um, in the environment that you created the artwork. And I'll show you an example here of how that works. Let's take our cherries and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them into Photoshop. And in Photoshop you can do a couple different things. Uh, if you're pasting in a vector graphic, you can paste it as a smart object, and what that will do is it will maintain its uh, vector editability. So I'm going to do that for this one. And I'm going to paste again a copy, but this one's going to be pixels. So this is going to remove all of the vector editability of this copy. Now we have two identical copies. I'm going to hide the vector for a second and let's take a look at the bitmap. We'll zoom into it and you'll see all of these pixels. Zoom back out, hide the bitmap. I'm going to show the vector. We'll zoom into it and again you can see the pixels. Now we know that this is still a vector image but since we're not working in a vector program anymore uh, we can't edit it as a vector, so it's going to get translated into a bitmap. Now this gets a little comp complicated and technical here because since it still is a vector, still being read as a vector file, we can still treat it like a vector. So if I scale it down, really small, and I put it over here, and then I do the same thing to our, our bitmap version, I'm going to scale this down to about the same size. What happens is when you enlarge and reduce a bitmap, uh, you're going to change the number of pixels. So since I've applied this transformation, by making it smaller, I've subtracted the number of pixels in the artwork. So now there's much fewer pixels that make up the image because it's smaller. When it was bigger, it had tons and tons and tons, thousands of pixels. Now it only has hundreds. So this is a problem because now if I make it bigger again, it's just going to inflate those pixels. And it doesn't, it doesn't know all of these extra details that were in the stem. It doesn't remember them. And so it's just going to guess and try to make up the details in this cherry. So you'll see that, sure, it makes it bigger, but it just makes it blurry in the process. And that's because all it did is just increase the number of pixels as best it could, which did not help the image. So what happens is if you keep scaling a bitmap image up and down to try to make it look better, to try to get it the right size, every time you do that you're changing the number of pixels, so every time you scale it up or down you're potentially making it more blurry and ruining the quality of the image. So if we look at the vector version of that, this is still technically a vector image we can scale it back up and it still remains sharp and we can scale it back down 
tiny and back up again and as you saw with the bitmap version that didn't fly it got blurry really fast and lost all its detail that's because it's made of pixels this vector version is not made of pixels it's still referring to this file here it's just reading it in Photoshop but it hasn't converted it to pixels at all it's still maintaining its vector functionality and that's because I've uh, opened it as a smart object let's take a look at a couple of other of my uh, vector artwork pieces just so you can get a feel of what you can do here we have a concentric mandala pattern that I made and oftentimes these uh, geometric shapes are much easier to make in a vector program rather than trying to do it in a bitmap program here's a hand that I made I used the gradient mesh feature for this we've got this uh, splashing soft drink also a vector so you can see you kinda have to simplify things a little bit depending on the style that you're doing but that's okay because from a distance especially small which a lot of these will be printed pretty small that's a good thing so it still looks pretty good if you know how to make this stuff here's a crest that I did um, as kind of a logo icon for uh, a website it was much easier to make it in vector than it would have been to make it with Corel Painter or Photoshop and this particular client wanted it to be versatile so this might get printed really large on a banner or it might get printed really small on a business card and we wanted it to look good no matter what so I hope that clarifies uh, what vectors are and how they differ from other types of computer graphics if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment on this video and if you found this information helpful take a quick second to like this video or share it on YouTube and that'll make it easier for other artists out there to find this information. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.